Welcome. I'm Martin Kuppinger. We're talking here about the future of business in the digital age, and we're looking at tech innovations that are about to transform the way we do our business. And I'm glad to welcome Joni Brennan. Welcome, Joni. Thank you, Martin. Thank you for having me. Joni, maybe you quickly introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Joni Brennan, President of the Digital ID and Authentication Council of Canada. We are a non-for-profit association made up of public sector, private sector, and leaders of industry who are all working together to advance digital identity that has privacy and security and works in the digital economy. Okay. And in that role, you have to do a lot with for sure, privacy, with mm -hmm. innovation, with identity. Mm -hmm. What is... The, the innovation in technology you feel is, is most relevant to businesses in the businesses in the digital age. Yeah, I think in terms of the most relevant in the digital age as we go forward, what I'm actually thinking that's going to be interesting is how how technologies will work together, and so particularly data models, uh, mm -hmm. which data models around things like verifiable credentials will become dominant, um, the interplay between standards and open source, um, and how we will be able to have access to data in something like verifiable credentials or maybe mobile driver's licenses, and how we will be able to use them in different digital wallets and in different networks. Um, it's not technology, but I think accountability and policy is going to play a role there. I think technology will go faster. Yeah, yeah I, I would even dare to say it, it, to a certain extent, it's a little bit about te technology as well, because uh, we see verifiable credentials or mm -hmm. decentralized identity or self sovereign mm -hmm. identity moving up the stack, so to speak, and gaining more attention as technologies. Mm -hmm. But clearly it's also, what do we do with that? And I remember from more than 10 years ago, I think we started writing about something we called life management platforms, yes, yes. which was about how do you use that? And at the end, what you're saying is we need to bring these things together to mm -hmm. enable everyone to deal better with uh, the, the, the data about him or her. Yes. Yes, and I think, and I think we already also see, um, for example, um, the the SIOP, the self issued open ID provider. So we're also seeing the existing standard space moving in and toward a convergence to how the existing standards will work with the new standards with the new open source as it's coming forward. So I think this is a kind of a next evolution or a more of a demonstration of life management platform because it's. It has to work whether you're being a citizen or an employee or a parent or uh, in every aspect of your life. And, and what, what is then the business value for, for an organization? Yeah, the, from the business value perspective, it has to be the lowering the cost of risk management. And so ensuring that you are, uh, it, you, you don't want to be holding data. Um, this is, of course, a big risk to be holding such data. So being a part of this ecosystem, lowering the cost of your risk management, making sure that you're prepared in the, let's say, the as the space moves and as the different standards and technology are mm -hmm. evolving, you have to be able to both meet your customers' needs and your clients' needs today, and also know that you may have to pivot or you may have to make data more than one data model available for the dynamic ecosystem where data can be in more than one wallet or more than one network. Mm -hmm. So you have to be strategically aware. So I think uh, lowering your cost of risk management and then being at the front um, for those opportunities to be a part of this life management ecosystem. Yeah, and, and, and also I think it's about consumer experience. I mm -hmm. also, I believe also that it's about frequently very process costs and even new business models. So yeah. I, I think um, when, when people are willing to share data in certain circumstances mm -hmm. that can be, it's disruptive, yeah. but it's also differentiating. Yeah. Um, so, so I think you see some some great opportunities here. I think it also builds um, opportunity and is a place to build trust with your customers and your clients. And so, you know, from a privacy, uh, personal data protection perspective, data protection is really one aspect. Uh, protecting the data is just one aspect. Yeah. Another aspect is now empowering the the client, the employee, to know which data exists and yeah. where they can use it, and that creates a, a further relationship. Yeah. And, and part of that is also reuse identity you know yeah. look, look at when i look at my just my my own life my own digital experience how frequently do i drop off mm -hmm. before i purchase mm -hmm. just because i have to create another username mm -hmm. and another password and stuff like that i don't want to do it anymore yeah. not doing it would mean you, you're you're risking 
a good customer experience, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And I think this uh, this 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 ecosystem, the, the innovations that are coming forward, um, support things like personas, um, showing only the data you mm -hmm. need to show for um, that transaction. Um, I think as well, something that we'll see that will be important as we go forward is measuring the assurance of different types of wallets. There's mm -hmm. still a yeah. lot of churn in the technology space. And so having frameworks and assurance programs that can say, yes, maybe these wallets are built with different technologies, but they, from an assurance and a security perspective, they're the same. Because then the issuer, the government, the 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 bank, uh, the fi the finance provider, then they know. Okay, these wallets have some degree of trust. I feel better than yeah. my credentials. Where, where do we stand today with these technologies? Mm, yeah, I think that there is a lot of uh, movement happening, particularly on the digital wallet uh, space. Uh, I see we see in Canada, we see some governments developing open source approaches mm -hmm. for digital wallets. We know there's a lot of wallet development um, in the private sector. We in the in the DIAC, we have just released a pan Canadian trust framework mm -hmm. assurance component. So this is how can you measure trust and put that that check mark next to that wallet, so that government issuer says yes, you can use our government wallet. You we also encourage if a wallet has a check mark, maybe you use that wallet as well. So I think where that space is moving forward, and this is where uh, tools for assurance will be really important, so that we don't have to stall and wait for the perfect mm -hmm. wallet or the perfect approach. We can yes. measure the trust across, and it them. will be multiple. I yes. think that's clear. Um, thank you. I think this is very insightful when it comes to how's the world of identity changing, and I mm. strongly believe in reusable identities where I can use few identities for a lot of purposes instead of recreating it again and again and then worst case struggling with a forgotten password tony thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me and for your insights pleasure to have you here and thank you to all of you in the audience for listening in hope to have you tuning in for another episode soon thank you thanks for having me martin <laughs>